In this video, I want to talk about applying Groove and Swing in Ableton Live, but also then a little bit about the uh, technical side of Groove and Swing, what the kind of point of it is. But first of all, for those of you who just want to know how to apply it, let's get started. Firstly, in Ableton Live, make sure that your Groove Pool is open here. You can do that by uh, cl just clicking on these double two wavy lines. If I close it there, you'll see that yours might look like that at the moment. So just click on there and make sure you've got your Groove Pool opened here. That gives you access to the full controls. You can, very simply, on a MIDI clip or an audio clip, it works on both, you can just go to your swing area in your core library and just drag and drop them onto a clip. So. Uh, a simple way to get to your swing library is in the Groove Pool. Just right click, go to Browse Groove Pool, pool Library, and then we'll just go down to a simple eighth uh, resolution swing. And I can just drag and drop that onto my MIDI clip here. And it's applied, and you can see it's appeared here in the Groove Pool. And you, down the bottom left hand side here, you can see it's also applied to the clip. So if I just take that off again now and just play you this clip as it is originally. But if I apply the swing to it now, I've got the swing applied, it's clear on that clip. Really different, really, really noticeable on that clip. Of course, the other way of doing it is just by putting whichever clips and uh, whichever grooves and swings you may want to use in your groove pool here. And then with each of the relevant clips highlighted in the bottom left hand side, you can just select the one you want. So you might have multiple in that drop down list there. Ableton Live applies this on the fly. It doesn't actually need to have it committed to a particular clip. It's just kind of recognizing what it will sound like and is playing it with the swing applied. If you want to actually commit this and shift your notes accordingly, so shift your MIDI notes accordingly, you have to actually click on the commit button here. And that's kind of moved the relevant notes based on the kind of musical swing that has been applied. So let's just undo that. And I'll just show you the same thing on an audio file as well. So if I just disable this track and enable the uh, WAV version of this, that's the original. And I can just, still with the groove, same, sorry, the same swing in my uh, groove pool here, I can now apply that to the audio track. And of course the way Ableton Live has to adjust this when you commit it is by warping it. It actually applies a bunch of warp markers to it. So if I click commit now, then you see in the bottom window here that we have a load of warp markers applied. So it's actually making adjustments to the WAV file itself and making it sound correct. And it does a really good job of it as well. You can also extract a swing from a clip. So here's the one that I was gonna to use to extract it. Let me just close these two down so you can see. So this one already has it applied to it. I mean, that sounds like the others did because I've already extracted this with the swing. So now if I right click on here and go to extract groove, it actually takes a bit of time because it's just a short section of WAV file. It will now extract what it thinks is the right settings, right groove and swing settings for this particular clip. And you can then use those on other clips as well. So if I go back now to my MIDI clip, which now, this is all getting a bit confusing, isn't it? Which, which now is just back to its original clip again. And then apply that groove that we just extracted off. So let me just drag that onto this MIDI clip and just see how that sounds. does a really good job. So now just to simplify things, I've deleted the other two uh, the other two tracks from here and we just have our eighth resolution, so uh, our eighth resolution swing on this particular beat. Let's just go through the controls down the bottom here. So this is the resolution of the timing on the particular clip and I'll get back to that in just a second. The quantize uh, adjustment says how much should I quantize the clip before applying the groove to it? So your, your clip originally, this is a perfectly quantized clip. Everything is perfectly aligned to the markers. Uh, so this really kind of has no effect in this case. But if these weren't perfectly aligned, you have a choice. You can either apply a swing to an already non-aligned track, or you can say, actually, before you apply it, I want 
to also to straighten everything up first and that's what this slider does if this is set to 100 percent, it will first shift everything up to the markers and align it and quantize it as per this timing here and then apply your swing after that uh, timing is really like a little bit like a dry wet it's kind of like how much of the groove is going to be actually applied to the clip random is it adds a bit of humanization to the clip so it kind of just adjusts those timings slightly so if a swing which is the case for a swing sort of adjusts it sort of delays the timing of every um every even beat so every second beat in a clip uh, based on the timing you've got here the randoms will say well actually we'll just adjust the amount that yeah, you know, we don't get it quite as perfect as we should. It will just make random adjustments to that. And I'll show that to you now. So if we'll just set it to 100% to go crazy, it's like a drummer who just has no idea what they're doing and just makes a big mess of it. But if we just do a little bit, it sounds fine and just has slight adjustments to it again to just make things sound a little bit more natural and finally the velocity setting here says how much of the velocity settings that are already in these in these grooves and in these swings should i apply to the clips so if you don't want to change the velocities of your um, hits and of your keys or whatever it might be at all then leave that to, at zero percent but if you're happy to use them the ones that already exist in these in these uh, preset grooves then apply as much of you know as much as you like to that the final thing I wanted to talk about is is if you get come across a clip where you don't see any effect from what you're doing, and you know that can happen. Uh, I, I got an example clip here. Uh, let me just find it. Right. So this clip. If I just zoom in on this clip here, this has got. It's got events on the first beat, the second beat, the third beat, and the fourth beat of a bar. The problem is swing, the rules of swing musically, and this isn't the case for all the grooves and stuff in the pool, but the rules of swing are that the second, the fourth, the sixth, and the eighth are delayed. And that's as per this timing here. So in this case, we have one eighth timing. So we need to split this bar into eight and say, yes, it's this one that would be delayed. It's this one that would be delayed. It's this one that would be delayed. And it's this one that would be delayed. But there's nothing there. There are no events on those in those areas. So this is going to sound exactly the same without a swing applied or with a swing applied. It makes no difference. You have to have events happening to make this something that you can apply a swing to. So if we stick something on the second, uh, now there, and there, so we're just increasing the number of hi-hats in the clip. So now we have something to work with because the swing can shift the second, fourth, sixth, and whatever. As we move along, hang on, let me just apply that. And there we go, let's have a listen. And if I commit it, you'll see exactly what that's done. All these stay exactly the same here. These first, third, fifth, and seventh here. But these, the second, so the evens, they get shifted away, shifted back. They get delayed on their original timing. That's exactly what swing is. Um, so... Yeah, sometimes if you come across a clip where it sounds as if nothing is happening, that might be the reason for it. So there we go. Uh, both the basics around applying swing and groove within Ableton Live and a little bit about the technical side of swing as well and kind of a, a sort of why it might not be quite working right for you. Hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching. I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.